Welcome everyone. Uh, today I'd like to show you the development process I've had developing the Vici R3 fly computer. So in October of 2021 I came up with a mission. Making an RC airplane that will fly autonomously. To do that you need certain things, but today we're going to talk about fly computers, specifically the Vici R3. So what really is a fly computer? In my case at least, a fly computer is a circuit board with sensors, processors and different chips whose purpose is controlling the airplane during flight. For that, we firstly need a set of sensors to get some data about the computer's location and orientation or state in Earth's frame. We have a gyroscope that gets us rotational speed in three axes. We have an accelerometer that senses accelerations also in three axes and the magnetometer that senses magnetic field density in three axes as well. We also have a barometer that gets us air pressure. We use it to determine the computer height in relation to sea level. In addition to those, we also have a GNSS receiver that uses navigational satellites to closely predict the computer's location and velocity. These kind of sensors are categorized as MEMS or microelectromechanical systems they are usually used in cell phones and give good but noisy data. I don't like noisy data, so I've implemented a couple of algorithms that are used to reduce noise and process the raw values. The first algorithm is the Medwick Quaternion Update Filter. It's a quaternion-based fusion system that runs 400 times a second, or in 400 Hz. It mixes values from the gyroscopes, accelerometers and magnetometers to compute the computer's orientation in relation to Earth's frame. Now we want to know the computer's position and velocity. To do that we could use the raw GNSS values, but there is a problem. These values are received 5 times a second, or in 5 Hz. It might be good for some applications, but for live control over an airplane it's not enough. As you can see, the graph jumps 5 times every second, which can lead to problems later on. To solve that issue, I've implemented a navigation asynchronous Kalman filter. This filter gets the raw GNSS data, equipped with accelerations that are rotated from the local frame to the global Earth's frame using the orientation that we have calculated before. What's cool about this is that the accelerations fill in the gaps for the GNSS data. It leads to way smoother, more reliable data. The filter outputs velocity and position in relation to the starting point in meters per second and meters respectively. Now we've talked about all of the sensors and calculations, but we haven't talked about what's making them. What's making them is a Cortex-M4 chip by ST Microelectronics. It runs at 80 MHz or 80 million times per second and is very good. It enables high performance and a lot of calculations quickly and reliably. Now, after we have a good estimation of the computer's state, we can use it to control the airplane. We use what's called the PID algorithm that enables us the control of the airplane's angle in three axes. We also want to control the airplane's position. And to do that, I wrote a simple function that takes two points. After that, we can pass it to the PID algorithm, thus controlling the location of the airplane. The PID outputs are transferred to small 9 gram servos through 10 ports on the top of the computer. One port for each servo. If we also want to control the airplane using a radio transmitter, it's possible to connect an RC receiver to the computer as well. We also want some way to get data about flights, and for that we have a microSD card slot and a flash chip on the back of the computer. This too enables us to log data fastly and reliably during flight. All of the gathered data can later be used to analyze flights. The SD card can also store flight path and different calibration data. We also have a LoRa radio transceiver that enables us to broadcast data and transfer certain commands over radio. For state indication, we have an RGB LED on the front 
and the buzzer on the back. This enables us to see and hear that everything is going well in the computer. All of the code is written in C++ using the Kyle MicroVillain 5 IDE. It's a great idea with certain debugging features and a dark theme, which is very important. Also, if it tells you something, the code is not using the STM32 hardware abstraction layer and not using register manipulation, which is kind of a flex and I had to tell someone. But now, when all of the systems are ready, we have to test them to prove that they work. Up until now, we've tested the state estimation algorithms in a passive data logging test flight that we've conducted recently. All of the systems perform great, so let's look at some data. Firstly, let's look at the Kalman filter data. Here, the green graph is the raw Genesis output, and the yellow is the processed Kalman filter output. You can see that the processed value is way smoother and nicer. Here are the estimated accuracy covariances of the Kalman filter. Higher means less sure, and you can see that it goes to zero five times per second, or every time we get a Genesis reading. Now, let's take a look at the magic filter data. We can check whether the filter performed well by looking at the calculated global acceleration from before. If, when stationary, the global acceleration is close to zero on all three axes, we know the orientation is correct. Of course, right out of the filter, we expect to see a G of acceleration on the Z axis, but to get usable data, we subtract it. Here is the data right after startup. You can see the accelerations settle at around zero pretty quickly, which is good. Here is the calculated global acceleration on the last part of the flight. On around T plus 300 seconds, you can see the landing spike of acceleration, and then the acceleration settles at around 0.6 meters per second squared, which is not great. Although the data here is pretty good, the Medwick filter didn't perform as expected due to uh, an error in the magnetometer calibration. This problem is already fixed and the computer is ready for more tests. Speaking of future tests, we plan to have a set of active control test flights in the near future. We want to test how the computers control its orientation, location, and perfect the action of the state estimation algorithms. That is all for today. All of the links and sources are available in the description. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel, and see you next time!